talk uh, again on this morning, uh, this uh, afternoon, from the subject titled Profiting from Trials. Profiting from Trials. God has a word uh, for us today from the Epistle of James. And this particular word today deals with profiting from trials. Profiting from trials. James, in this epistle, touches on something that is so prevalent today. What James shows us in the text is that God, through trials, take those that believe in him and shape them into what he wants them to be through trials. Through trials, through troubles, through difficulties, God shape us into what God wants us to be. Now, God wants you and me to be somebody special. And because God wants you and me to be someone special, he will allow you and allow me to go through some things to enhance our relationship with him. And in return, in enhancing our relationship in him and with him, we become better people. Trials. When we talk about trials, when we look at this word trials, we take the word and we go to Webster's Dictionary and look at it. And it tells us basically that a trial is a test. A trial is a test. A trial is a test. It is a testing by examination or experiment. A trial is a test. And so James here says that God allows us to go through trials. And so with that, then God allows us to go through tests. Uh, God takes us through a, a testing phase and, and we're in and out of tests. We're in and out of trials. He takes us through these testing phases and, and he takes us through them to examine us and to experiment on us. Not that God does not know our capabilities. Not that God does not know about us, but in the testing, in the experimenting, in the examinations, God is trying to help us to understand more about ourselves. He already knows. And so it's in the testing. It is in the trials that, that God help us to understand better who we are so that we'll know more about our expectations as well as our limitations. God takes us through trials. Trials are a test of character. They are a test of power and a test of endurance. Trials. Trials are hardships. Trials are sources of annoyances and and trouble trials. Trials are a state of suffering. Trials are difficulty that you and I deal with trials. The actual Greek word here when we look at tested or when we look at trials, the actual Greek word, the original language that this particular word was written in is a word that is called Pieromos. Pieromos. The word really means putting to test. Putting to test. Putting to test. Putting something to test. God puts us to test. God puts us to test to test our character, as I mentioned earlier, to test our power and to test our endurance. God puts us to test. Then the trial or the test that has gripped your life is not to destroy you. Instead, that trial or that test is sent in order that you might be strengthened. God is trying to strengthen us in the trials and in the tests that we go through. And you say, well, I ought to be mighty strong by now because I've been through a lot. Somebody in here said, God, I ought to be really strong now, God, because when I think about what I've been through, I ought to be, I ought to have all kind of faith muscles. I ought to have all kind of endurance and power in my life because of what I've been through. Anybody in here been through something? You didn't think you were going to get through it? God brought you through it. You're stronger now. That 
trial came for a reason. It was purposeful. Perhaps we would be slightly naive to think that in this life, we would not have difficult moments. We're going to have some difficult moments. It's all right. Uh, we're going to have some difficult moments. You and I will. We would be naive if we did not think that we would have some difficulties in life. That life would just be so good and so easy and, and never any, uh, any uh, roadblocks or never any pit potholes or never any obstacles. Life is not that way. We're going to have some difficult moments. Job writes this in the book of Job. And when you talk about trouble, Job had a lot of trouble. Job writes this. He says that man born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. You're going to have some difficulties. It's all right. It's all right to have some, some situations that you got to struggle with in life because in, in these struggles, you'll be a made better. Anybody in here want to be better? Do you want to be better? Do you want to be better? One of the problems that we have today is that nobody want to suffer. Nobody wants to really suffer. We want everything to be good. Nobody really want to suffer. Uh, you know, we, 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 we really would prefer that we didn't have to deal with anything that was difficult. Uh, we want life to just be easy for us. If I had to choose between a life void of trials and one with trials, I would choose the one without the trials. Why? Because it's easy, seemingly, and it's easy to not have to deal with something. But, but that's on my flesh and on my carnal side, on, on the manly side of me, on my human side of me. I'd rather not deal with the trials. But when I think about it from a spiritual level, when I put it on a spiritual plane and look at it from that perspective, I really love having the trials. I really would rather have the trial. Why? Because in the trial, I know God is making me better. God is making me stronger. God is allowing me to have a more patience and endurance in my trial. And so in reality, the trial is better for me. But in my carnal self, I'd rather not deal with it. But when I look at it in, in my spiritual self and from my spiritual mind, then I understand that the trial is good for me. It benefits me. I can profit from it. In fact, the fact of the matter, as Andre Crouch says it, he says it so well. He says, if I did not have a problem, I would not know that God could solve it. I would not know what faith in God would do. Our trials are there for a reason. And as we look at our nation today and as we look at all that we are hearing in the news and all that we are experiencing, even us are experiencing as people today, we understand that we are in the middle of something and it may be difficult, but I want you to know that God is trying to work something out in us. He's trying to make us better. I shared with a young man uh, several years ago. I talked with him about he was having some difficulties in his marriage. And uh, I, I said to him, uh, I said, well, you know, I understand you have some difficulties, but I want you to, this is what you do. You, you need to start studying your Bible. You need to start praying. You need to start meditating. You need to start getting closer to God because, you know, you just want to be, you want God to guide you in this. And, and, and you know, something, sometime after that or a few years after, his life just simply explodes. He and his wife got a divorce and the, the child and the children was molested and so many things was going on in his life. If he had not started that process of getting closer to God, there's no way he would have been able to deal with what he went through. And so in the moments or in the, uh, the place of trial and tribulation, you need to make sure that you're staying close to God because if you stay close to God out of cloud, God will bring you through it. And not only will he bring you through it, he'll give you success in it. Anybody in here want to be brought through something? Well, just trust God. Stay close to God. If life was handed to you on a silver platter, how would you change your habits? How would you change your attitudes? 
If life was handed to you on a silver platter, you just had everything that you needed, what would bring about a change in your life? We Change take place as a result of resistance. Change take place as a result of pushing against something. When you push against it is when you change. I remember when I was a track athlete in high school and how in order for me to get stronger, I had to work out with the weights. And we would work out with the weights every day and, and the weights were heavy and the weights would push against us and we would push against the weights and I pushing against the weights and the weights pushing against us made us stronger. Trials are like that. Trial push against you and you push back against the trial and as they push against you and you push back, you get stronger and stronger and so you invite the trial, come on trial into my life because I want to get stronger. Doesn't sound like a sane person to invite trials in. But James says, trials come to make me stronger. They come to make me better. He says, I ought to have joy in my trials. They come to strengthen me. Write this down. When facing trials, always expect a positive conclusion. When facing trials, always expect a positive conclusion. Look at what he says there in verse 2. He says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. When facing trials, always expect a positive conclusion. That's what James is talking about here. He, talk, he, says, he says, My brethren, he's talking about the believers there. My brethren, believers. He says to them, said, Count it all joy. Count it joy. Being brothers in Christ and sisters in Christ means sharing in the testing of your faith. What that means then is that if I'm in a trial, then you ought to be going through that trial with me. We ought to be sharing our trial. You ought to be able to come to me and say, look, at this is what I'm going through. And we ought to be praying through this thing together. We ought to be sharing our trial, trials, brother. James says, my brethren, the people, the persons of God here in my congregation, he says, I want you to understand something. You can count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Notice he said various trials now. He didn't just say a trial. He said various trials. When you fall into various trials, uh, your, your paycheck may not be uh, uh, large enough to take care of your bills. That's a trial. Yeah, that's one kind. That's one kind of trial. You may be dealing with something in your marriage. That, that's another kind of trial. Uh, you may be sick. That's another kind of trial. Your child may be wavering. That's another kind of trial. James said, whatever the trial is, there may be various and sundry trials, but you need to understand, you can still find joy in whatever the trial is. Somebody ought to pray with me today. You can still find trials in whatever Brother, you can still find joy in whatever your trial is. Somebody, somebody in here may say, this trial right here, I can't be happy. I can't find no joy in this. I can't find any kind of contentment in this because this is just a little bit too much for me. God, I can find some contentment if my paycheck is wrong and I don't have enough money to pay my bills. I can, I can find some kind of contentment, some joy in that. But God, when the doctor tells me I got cancer, I can't find no joy or contentment in that. But James said, whatever the trial is, uh, whatever the trial, various trials, he says, he says, my brother encountered all joy when you fall into various trials, different ones. He, he, he didn't specify, he didn't put them in categories. He said, various trials. So then, as in the admonition of Romans chapter 5, verse 2 through Five in First Peter chapter one verse six to seven, James here teaches that trials serves as a test for genuine faith. Trials serve as a test for genuine faith. If you say I got faith, I got faith. Wait until your trial comes. We'll see if you really got faith. A trial serves as a test to genuine faith. Early hardships and losses put believers on display. You, you, let me say that again now. Early hardships and losses 
put believers on display. When you're dealing with your hardships, you're dealing with your losses, uh, you are on display. The world is looking at you. And the world, let me see how this Christian is going to behave. Let me see how this, this man of God, uh, this woman of God, uh, let me see how they are going to behave in the middle of their hardship, in the middle of their loss. Lost every dime you got, how are you going to behave? The world is looking at you. Your friends and family members, they're looking at you. Let me see how you are going to behave. 